Hi, everyone. My name is Philomena Hempel. You've probably seen me around a lot. I work for St. Leo's and for the Newman Center, um, and I was a student at Murray State and I graduated last year. Um, a couple nights ago, I got stranded at the Nashville airport in the parking lot. The car that I was in had a battery that was completely dead and someone had siphoned all the gas out. I couldn't get anywhere for four hours. At 10.30 at night, I called my friend who was in Nashville and she came and picked me up. This was a friendship that, I, that had been developed because of and through the Newman Center. This friend was able to come pick me up, give me a place to stay that night so that in the morning I could get back here to Murray. Um, also, this friend is also discerning religious life along with myself, so please pray for us. Um, but we got to pray together that morning before I left. And yeah, this is just one of like many examples of like good and holy friendships that I have built through my time at the Newman Center. I grew up super Catholic, but my faith wasn't relational and it wasn't based on love. I respected God, but I wasn't like in a loving relationship with him. He was someone to be kind of like a little bit feared and scared of. I moved to Murray when I was 19 and began to experience what truly living and loving my faith meant for me because I got involved with the Newman Center. I saw other people praying daily holy hours and I wanted that for myself, so I began to make that commitment each day. I also got into a Bible study, began leading a Bible study, being in and leading discipleship, and had access to the chapel 24-7, which was a life changer. Sometimes I'd be there from midnight till 1 a.m. because that was when I could pray my holy hour that day. And sometimes when I was leaving, somebody else would be coming in to pray theirs from 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. because that was when they could get their holy hour in that day. My relationship with the Lord began to really change, and I began to fall in love with Jesus. I began to see how my relationship with the Lord and how it was changing was impacting my family, who lives 300 miles away. When I'd go home, my parents would see me having a real commitment to prayer, and my siblings would see that, and they would also begin to desire it. And their prayer lives changed because of what I learned at the Newman Center here at Murray. Newman is so much more than just a fun hangout place. I mean, it, it is that too. But it's, also, it's mainly a place of encounter with God through the chapel and the sacraments, through the people and the friendships, through the Bible studies and discipleship meetings. It's truly a place where I and many others have been formed to go out into the world and share the love of Christ with others. And I can honestly say that without the foundation of prayer that I was given through the ministry of Newman, I would not be discerning religious life. I believe it's really important to have a, this place in the future because if we don't, then who's gonna form our young people and give them a place to gather in community and just show them what great joy and excitement it truly is to live like fully alive in Christ. So whatever your capacity looks like, I want to just really encourage you to support the mission of the Newman Center um, and this rebuild in like whatever way you can, um, whether it's through prayer, whether it is through like, yeah, a monetary donation um, or through time and talent spent for the different aspects that have to go into building like a whole new building. Um, this is a place that's forming our young people for the future, and it's a place which has impacted souls. Souls which are worth the very price of the blood of God. Um, souls which are of infinite value. Um, and something that can bring the infinitely valuable soul of a person to Christ, to heaven, to salvation, it's worth our time and worth our treasure. Um, and the Newman Center has proven to be such a place for myself and for many of my friends, for my friend that picked me up in Nashville and gave me a place to stay. Um, so yeah, I just want to thank you all for all that you do already in support of the students and the souls on campus and the mission of the Newman Center. Um, and I just want to ask and encourage you to continue to support the mission um, of what the Newman Center is and, and of what it's doing. So thank you.
understand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your the Lord continues to feed us his risen body in the form of the Eucharist again and again as we come to this altar, that we may be courageous in our lives. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you, the author of life, you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did, but God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. 
the way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way, and Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While he, they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do you have questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It has been said, that the more you get to know someone, the more you realize that there is so much more to know about them. If, for example, I learned that my friend was taken up rock climbing, all of a sudden, there would be a lot more questions I would ask. When did you start? Where do you go to climb? How do you train? How do you keep from getting dizzy up so high? Learning these new facts makes me realize that there is a whole lot more I don't know about this person. What does it mean to actually know someone? Not just to know about them, but to know them through and through. 
Although Lynn and I have been married for over 50 years, and we know each other very well, and yet we still learn new things about each other. Today's gospel passage occurs just after Jesus' appearance on the road to Emmaus. Two of the disciples were walking on the road discussing all the things that had just happened in Jerusalem, namely the death and the reported resurrection of Jesus. Well, Jesus himself began to walk with them, but as Luke reports, they were prevented from recognizing him. Only after they invited him to stay with them did they recognize him as he broke the bread for them at table. We are currently in the year of the Eucharistic revival, a time when the church throughout the country is preaching and teaching about the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Jesus Christ is fully present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharistic bread consecrated on this altar. It is a gift from Jesus himself, given to the apostles and to each one of us. It is through this gift of himself, of the Eucharist, that we encounter Christ, especially at Mass. We share the experience of these early Christians by how we recognize Jesus as the one true presence when we receive him at the altar. In the sacrament of the Eucharist, we are invited into a profound encounter with the living Christ. It is not just a symbolic gesture, not a remembrance of past events. Rather, it is sacramental reality where the divine Jesus joins with our humanity. This profound mystery of faith enables us not only to remember but to actively participate in the salvation work of Christ. As we partake of the Eucharist in Holy Communion, we are united with Christ and to one another in a communion of love and grace. We echo the Im intimate experience by the disciples at Emmaus when they said, were not our hearts burning within us as he walked with us? The Eucharist that we receive at communion became a pivotal moment when our encounter with Christ overcomes the ordinary of our lives and leads us to a deeper understanding of his presence here with us. Although the disciples know Jesus, who Jesus is, and they had experienced being with him, they are still startled and terrified by this presence of Jesus. He had to reassure them, inviting them to feel his wounds. He even went so far as to eat a piece of fish in front of them. He had to teach them that he is the fulfillment of the prophets. He is the Christ who suffered and died and rose again on the third day for the forgiveness of sins. How do we get to know Jesus? We can know a lot about him and develop a laundry list of facts and figures that describe a lot of bad things about Jesus. 
But can we claim, like the apostles did, to know him? Not just to know about him, but to really know him. In our second reading today from John, we learn about this knowing. John tells us that those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, are liars. And the truth is not in them. Meaning that we learn to know Christ through what he teaches us how to act. Understanding about Jesus involves more than just intellectual knowledge. This type of knowing is found in our daily interactions with his commandments and making his commandments our own. It is the moments of applying his commandments to our lives that we begin to truly understand who he is by making his love, his compassion, his mercy a part of our actions that we not only connect with him intellectually, but also on a deeper spiritual level. This is the process which transforms us to move beyond acceptance and to a profound relationship with him. We take him into our hearts and listen and learn from him. Our ongoing relationship with Jesus is an ever-growing one. We continue to know him and to know about him. He is constantly teaching us how to transform our lives to be more like him. Let us, let us pray that the Lord will continue to shine his face on us, continue to answer our prayers, to have pity on us, and continue to place his goodness in our hearts. We can know Christ in any number of ways, but the most powerful is just as the early followers recognized him and got to know him, and that is through the breaking of the bread, the Eucharist. I believe.
off, let us now offer our prayers of petition to the Lord. For church leaders, may the Lord guide them in caring for the physical and spiritual needs of those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. For civic leaders, may the Lord grant them fortitude in defending the dignity and sanctity of life. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are struggling in their faith, may they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. For all gathered here, may the Spirit renew us in the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. For Lila and Olivia Thacker, who are being baptized this weekend at Saint, here at St. Leo, that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit through baptism will fill them with joy for God's unending love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. For the success of the Newman Catholic Center campaign, that God's grace will always guide this mission. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are sick and suffering, especially Patty Lewis, Joan Creed, and Tessa Moray, that the grace of God will bring them consolation and relief. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may they rest in eternal peace with the Father in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. For the repose of the soul of Janice Weaver, the intention of this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. For those intentions that we hold in the silence of our heart, and for those written in our Book of Intentions, let us pray to the Lord. God and Father, you know our needs before we ask. Still, hear our prayers, for we make them through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her a cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life. And the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death. And in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew with eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Last weekend, we kicked off the capital campaign for the Newman Catholic Center Rebuild Project, and so we've prepared um, information about the project for all of the families of the parish and for anybody else who is interested and cares, and it seems like it's a pretty good thing to care about. Um, and they are in the back. One of the components in the packet is a novena booklet. And the students have written the prayers inside this novena booklet, and we're asking everyone to pray for the nine days leading up to two Sundays away as we ask everyone to contribute generously to this project. And so the novena booklet's been designed by students and former students, a uh, great committee, and everything written inside. So really want everybody to pick one up and join us in prayer uh, for this effort. Um, the fish fry recently concluded, as Lent did, and it was very successful, and so we're very grateful for all those who helped. The net um, monies that came from the effort were $13,700, and so we're grateful for that. It's not quite enough to pay off the remainder of the Newman Center project. <laughs> Uh, that's still about $800,000, that. Um, but it's still significant and a great testament to all those who helped to make it possible. Finally, nomination forms are in the pews. They are for parish council members, and they are due by the 17th of this month. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia.